Hello and welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's program, Kimberly Acosta. Many of the stories viewed here can be found at our websites, IndianCountryNews.com or IndianCountryTV.com. Here is the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. Salish member Pat Matt caught his break when Quickstar Productions found his band site, Cross Tribe, while skimming the pages of MySpace. The recording label heard the song Said and Done, written by Matt, and chose it for their upcoming CD called Unified Grace, which is scheduled to be released in Walmart stores across the nation this month. Sixteen artists across the United States were chosen and featured on the CD. Half the proceeds from the CD will go to the Nyambaber Clinic in West Uganda. The clinic is partnered with St. Timothy's Church Diocese of West Ankle in southwestern Uganda. One of the biggest challenges of the clinic faces is malaria, and their vital task is to keep clinics stocked with anti-malarial medications and mosquito nets. The song Said and Done can be heard at myspace.com forward slash N8VX. Anthony Lee, a 15-year-old from Hessel, Michigan, is urgently in need of a bone marrow transplant, but his major obstacle is a suitable donor. A suitable donor needs to have an ancestry similar to Lee, which would be a mix of American Indian, Korean, German, and Swede. Doctors diagnosed a plastic anemia in Lee about two and a half years ago. According to the Mayo Clinic, a plastic anemia is a condition where one's body stops producing enough new blood cells to replenish dying cells. Lee's unique ancestry is a key challenge in this situation. The National Morrow Donor Program said there's a dire need for both Asians and American Indians to register as potential donors to fill a shortage of readily available prospects. To, jo to join the Morrow Registry and to become a donor, you can contact the National Morrow Donor Program at 1-800-471-3020. On June 8th, Hopi Veterans Services honored Private First Class Travis Yaba, the last surviving Hopi code talker. Yaba was presented a shadow box with the military medals and ribbons he earned during World War II, a picture of him that was taken during the war, and other mementos to highlight his military service. Yaba start, served in the U.S. Army, 323rd Infantry Regiment, 81st Infantry Division, also known as the Wildcat Division, from 1943 to 1945. The medals he earned were, that, that are encased in the shadow box include the World War II Victory Medal, American Campaign Medal, the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, Good Conduct Medal, Philippine Liberation Ribbon, and a Combat Infantry Badge. Bob Gauthier, former director of the Salish Katunia Housing Authority was recently presented with a national award at the annual National American Indian Housing Council convention held in New Orleans. Gauthier was presented with the George Nolan Award in recognition of his leadership in Indian housing. Gauthier helped shepherd many historical changes in the philosophy and management approach of Indian housing on Indian reservations. One of the biggest things he helped accomplish was the removal of Indian housing programs from HUD management strings. Although SKHA and similar Indian housing programs technically remain under HUD at a, as a subcomponent, they operate under their own mandate. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency formally recognized the Navajo Nation Environmental Protection Agency on June 15th for their efforts to protect and preserve the environment over the last 30 years. The Navajo Nation continues to build and implement its programs, has enacted seven of its own environmental laws, and set a national precedent for tribal sovereignty and environmental protection. Currently, the Navajo Nation EPA, four federal agencies, and the U.S. EPA are working together to implement a five-year plan to address the legacy of over 500 abandoned uranium mines on the Navajo Nation. Also, the Navajo Nation EPA, the Nation Navajo Department of Water Resources, U.S. EPA, and the Indian Health Service are working together to provide safe drinking water to 3,000 people and wastewater infrastructure to 2,500 homes. 
For more information on the Navajo Nation environmental projects, you can visit their website at navajonationsepa.org. Navajo Code Talker Matthew Martin of Crown Point, New Mexico passed away on June 22nd. He is the fourth Navajo Code Talker to pass away within five weeks. Martin was born on May 3, 1925 at Star Lake, New Mexico. He enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps on October 12, 1943 and was a qualified as a marksman and a code talker and attained the rank of corporal. He saw combat at Iwo Jima and the Volcano Islands from February to March of 1945 and during the occupation of Japan from September 1945 to April of 1946. He was honorably discharged from the first separation company, MGB USMC, on May 13, 1946. His awards include the Good Conduct, Good Conduct Medal and the Navajo Nation Code Talker Congressional Silver Medal. His service and outstanding contributions were recognized by Arizona Governor Jan Hull and by the 45th Arizona State Legislature in 2002. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We'd like to thank our underwriters for helping us with this broadcast and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you and have a grand day.